I'm Amy Goodman. President-elect Donald Trump has picked Thomas Homan to serve as his so-called border czar. Homan served as acting director of ICE, that's Immigration and Customs Enforcement, during the first Trump administration. He's backed Trump's plans to deport as many as 20 million immigrants. During a recent interview on 60 Minutes, Homan said the mass deportation campaign could also target U.S.-born children who were born to undocumented parents. He was interviewed by Cecilia Vega. We have seen one estimate that says it would cost $88 billion to deport a million people a year. I don't know if that's accurate or not. Is that what American taxpayers should expect? What price do you put on national security? Is that worth it? Is there a way to carry out mass deportation without separating families? Of course there is. Families can be deported together. That interview on CBS's 60 Minutes. The appointment of Tom Homan comes as The Wall Street Journal reports advisors to Trump are considering using military bases to hold detained immigrants and military planes to carry out deportations. I'm Amy Goodman. We begin today's show looking at the spate of racist text messages referencing slavery that were sent to black people across the United States starting the day after Donald Trump's election victory. People in New York, in Alabama, in California, Georgia, Illinois, Indiana, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, and Virginia, including students at historically black universities and even middle schoolers as young as 13 years old, reported getting a variation of this message that was addressed to them by name. Quote, Greetings, William Hines. You have been selected to pick cotton at the nearest plantation. Please be ready November 7, 2024, by 5 p.m. sharp, with your belongings. Our executive slaves will come to your address in a black SUV. Be prepared to cert be searched down once you've entered. A similar text message sent to a man in Charlotte, Virginia, read, quote, Greetings, Samuel. You've been selected to pick cotton at the nearest plantation. Be ready at 12 p.m. sharp with your belongings. Our executive slaves will come get you in a brown van. Be prepared to be searched down once you've entered the plantation. You are in Plantation Group W. Monet Miller described her reaction when she received the racist text message. I immediately texted it, the number back. Um, Who is this? Oh, my God, profanity. <laughs> and then I even tried to call it. Um, and that's when I found out it was, like, from a fake text, one of those, take, like, fake numbers. So it had already been discarded. The FBI and FCC, that's the Federal Communications Commission, say they're now investigating the racist text messages, and the source remains clear. The Trump campaign spoke un remains unclear. They just know it comes from text now. A Trump campaign spokesman said it, quote, has absolutely nothing to do with these text messages. This is Georgia's NAACP president, Gerald Griggs. Our response is to remind the young people uh, where they come from, who they are, and that we do not sit back and allow people to threaten us without a response, a nonviolent, peaceful response, but a forceful response that this is our country. Uh, we're not returning to any plantation. Uh, we built this country. We'll continue to make this country move forward and make, live up to the promise that it gave all the citizens. Meanwhile, Fisk University, the historically black college in Nashville, Tennessee, issued a statement calling the messages that targeted some of its students deeply unsettling. For more, we're joined by two guests. In Washington, D.C., Wisdom Cole is with us, and senior national director of advocacy for the NAACP. And in Columbia, South Carolina, Robert Green II history professor at Claflin University, president of the African American Intellectual History Society, senior editor of Black Perspectives, co-editor of a book titled Invisible No More, The African American Experience at the University of South Carolina. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Professor Robert Greene II, can you ha talk about what happened at Claflin, the students and others who you hear got these text messages and the response? Response. Uh, Claflin is what the oldest historically black university in South Carolina. 
Yes, that is correct. And, and first off, thank you so much for having me on this morning. Um, I can tell you that I heard from both uh, students about the text messages and also from our campus security force who sent out an email explaining to folks what the text messages were to remain calm, but to also remain aware and alert of what was going on. Um, initially, when I heard about the text, I thought it was a bit of a hoax, but I soon began hearing from both students and campus security about it, and it quickly became clear that this wasn't just a Claflin problem, it was a national issue as well. And what were the response of students, for example, who got these text messages? I mean, we hear the young woman who said—I mean, she sees the phone number that it's coming from, and she texts back immediately because she was scared. Well, certainly, I think for many of our students, it was a bit of a surprise to receive those text messages. On the other hand, um, our generation of students have grown up receiving a lot of text messages from a lot of unknown phone numbers. I think what makes us a bit different was the content of the messages themselves. Uh, for many students, they were surprised, they were a bit hurt, and coupled with the actual election day results, it has been a pretty frustrating week for many of our students. Mm. Let me ask you, uh, Wisdom Cole, um, you deal with uh, young people around the country. Uh, talk about what the NAACP has heard. How extensive is this? You know, uh, these messages are, are deeply dis uh, disturbing, right? You know, as you said earlier, uh, children as young as 13 have received these messages um, across the nation. I believe it cost 32 states. You know, this is a disturbing message to receive uh, shortly after the election, right? But the sad part about, about it is that this is only the beginning. You know, when we see what's happening um, in this newly elected administration, um, we've seen this before, right? You know, the stripping away of diversity, equity, inclusion, uh, the stripping away of our, our, our rights, right? You know, messages like this continue to, to set a precedent in terms of racism um, in America, in our schools, and in our phones. Um, it's important for us to be able to protect our young people and allow them to understand that they're, they deserve to be in those spaces, that they um, are a part of our community and our culture, and they're a part of what allows us to propel our, our fear for our future. Now, what is the NAACP demanding, Wisdom Cole? I was interested that um, when the Trump campaign was asked to respond, this came out right after um, uh, Trump was elected, uh, they responded, this has nothing to do with us. They didn't go on to say, and we consider this vile and racist and it must stop. What exactly are you demanding? What do you understand from the company that was the platform for this? Was it called Text Now? You know, uh, regardless if you believe it has nothing to do with you, it impacts the future of our country. The real question is, what are you going to do about it?